Hello chess friends and welcome to your Zard of Chess channel and welcome back to our Queen's Game Decline studies. So in this studies we have seen some great openings and great defenses after first move d4, d5 and c4 and today we're continuing with our studies with the so-called anti-Cambridge spring system that we have started recently or here on my YouTube chess channel. Uh, first we have seen the Cambridge spring defense uh, from white and from black's perspective with the most important strategic ideas with the most important strategic concepts of the opening and re recently as I said we have started this anti uh, Cambridge Spring system which is in my opinion also a very important line that we should know and I've prepared uh, so far two great games in this anti-Cambridge Springs defense uh, that have been played by the Stockfish engine first we'll see one game uh, played by Stockfish with the white pieces and then in the next video I'm going to introduce also some cool Stockfish ideas uh, with the black pieces in the anti-Cambridge Springs system so uh, let's see now what is the anti-Cambridge Springs system and what is so cool about this opening line and what are uh, here Stockfish new ideas because I think this is really the latest theory of the, the system. Um, no, I found this uh, beautiful games on the CCR chest on website. You can also check it out. It will be the first thing in the description below. So you can also download some other uh, great games played by Stockfish, Dragon Angel, Lila C0. You can also search for different opportunities, different openings, different sidelines. So as I said, have fun, download all those PGNs and really see the latest theory of the Rui Lopez Italian game, maybe the Queen's game, the client, whatever uh, is uh, very important to you, of course. So let's see now the game. It's Stockfish versus Houdini in the, the anti Cambridge Springs defense. Here, Stockfish opens with the move c4. We have now the move e6 by Houdini, knight to c3, d5, and after move d4, the game they're transposed into the queen's game decline. So after knight to f6, we have bishop to g5, modern variation, and after a knight from b to d7, we have now the move e3, and here c6. It's already sort of a preparation here by. Uh, the Houdini engine to play queen to a5 and then we would reach of course the so-called uh, Cambridge Springs defense which is in my opinion really a great opening uh, as I said we have covered already many games in this opening line please check it out if you have maybe problems uh, to find yourselves a really decent repertoire against uh, D4, the Cambridge Springs defense is, in my opinion, really one of the best methods. But again, we're analyzing now this line, A3, which is now the so-called anti-Cambridge Springs defense. This is now the so-called Capablanca variation of the Queen's Game decline. This idea has been introduced by Jose Raul Capablanca, uh, one of the greatest players of all times, A3. It's uh, just a calm move. It's nothing spectacular. It's not that uh, here we have invented uh, really a warm milk or something. Um, here after move a3, we're basically preventing uh, this move queen to a5. And of course, we're not allowing this pinning idea with bishop to b4. Then later, of course, also knight to e4 could continue the pressure here against your knight on c3. So that was always our method in the Cambridge Springs defense. Now with move a3, this idea is not working. So here in the continuation, Houdini continues with normal development. Bishop to e7. Seven, rook to c1 very important move delaying the bishop's move we are not playing with the bishop on f1 we're waiting maybe black to play d takes c4 and then we'll of course come with the bishop out with the tempo it's not the same if you play bishop to c bishop to d3 now then d takes c4 bishop, uh, bishop to c4 b5 bishop to d3 a6 and c5 is going to happen i think uh, black could have really a solid game so as i said your bishop to d3 move would be sort of a loss of tempo you're waiting your opponent to take the pawn on c4 for then you get with your bishop out with the tempo so that's why rook to uh, c1 delaying the bishop's move kingside casting knight to f3 again delaying the bishop's move h6 bishop to h4 and after knight to e4 we have now a very important idea that's now the so-called lasker idea uh we'll also analyze the so-called lasker defense uh of the queen's game declined it's a very very um maybe not popular idea uh, from black's perspective to play the game but uh, this move knight to e4 will cover more uh, i guarantee you this is a really uh, an idea that has to be explored more for instance uh, vichy anand introduced this idea in his world championship match against Veselin Topalov, he destroyed Veselin Topalov with this simple move. And it's not so even uh, too easy uh, to react here from White's perspective because I think many of us would do something like this. Bishop to e7, uh, queen to e7 and would simply keep the tension now in the center of the board or would even pick up the knight on e4. But now after d takes e4, knight to d2, 
we have now several problems uh, uh, in the next couple of moves f5 is going to happen g5 even e5 i think is an opportunity and if you don't react here to the knight move e4 uh, then of course f5 is going to happen and the black would build a really powerful outpost the knight would build really a uh, beautiful attacking formation would build sort of a stonewall formation like in the dutch defense again f4 then g5 g4 h5 f4 is going to happen so probably you could have many positional problems as i said i'm not saying you lose the game because if we have reached this position but it could be really unpleasant now for for white to play the game so that's why let's go back after move uh, knight to e4 stockfish plays a very important line bishop to g3 because if now knight takes g3 happens then of course h takes g3 and if something like bishop to f6 happens then we have this one g4 is always a good choice here g4 even in some occasions z5 bishop to d3 i think you are vulnerable a little bit around the square h7 you could also try bishop to d3 bishop to b1 maybe queen to c2 queen to d3 uh creating also a nice queen and bishop battery here on the like square diagonal so this could be also unpleasant here uh, to face in black's position so that's why knight to f6 was played by um the Houdini engine, the Houdini engine is of course trying maybe to pick up the knight or pick up the bishop and then to get this other knight on this beautiful square e4. So we have now knight takes e4 finally. Now it's not the same because after d takes e4 now you see we don't have immediately the move f5 and now we can even use the square uh, knight uh, e5 here because the knight is not on d7 anymore so now it's not a uh, risk to get uh, the, the trace of pieces here around the square e5. So after move knight to e4, we have uh, knight takes e4, bishop to d3, and after queen to a5, now a beautiful, beautiful move here by Stockfish. Stockfish plays king to e2. And it seems so that something went wrong because um, I think many of us uh, would not love to play now this game from white's perspective, especially because of the fact that your king is stuck in the center, especially because of the fact that your knight uh, could maybe take out the bishop on g3 but this is actually a beautiful idea here by stockfish a really incredible wild position idea because we have to know this okay the king is in the center of the board and in order to make something out of your opponent's king in the central position you have to open the center in order to attack it so that's why i think here the king on e2 is perfectly fine because what black cannot easily open the position with move e5 because white has a great control of the e5 score so e5 is never uh, going to work and d takes e5 d takes e4 in order to open the position is also not working because you can this get this one bishop to e4 you lose the knight what you could do maybe is this idea bishop to g3 knight takes g3 and after g h takes g3 you could of course try bishop to f6 and maybe after something like c5 you could maybe try queen to c7 uh, trying maybe finally to break and enter with the move e5 here this seems tempting but actually look at this what happens g4 g4 is now a brilliant move because if you play here e5 then we have g5 look at this after h takes g5 now we play d takes uh, e5 bishop to e5 and look at this bishop to h7 is going to open now the h file and you're getting destroyed so it's really really brutal now uh, you see you can also take of course with the bishop knight to g5 h takes g5 again bishop to h7 uh, causes many many tactical problems rook to h8 is also an opportunity so so many dirty ideas uh, come to my mind here on the h file so as i said it's not so easy as i said for uh, for black even to open the position let's go back even if you play here something like c5 nothing dramatically changes look at this d takes c5 after bishop to c5 b4 is again uh, winning the game on spot so as i said this position has to be known i think that your opponent cannot open the center i think as i said many of us would be scared to play the game like this but you have to understand uh the potential open center position it's not possible here for black to make that happen so here in the continuation rook to d8 was played by uh, houdini we have now the move c5 so you see stockfish is locking again uh here the center is not allowing this position to explode in the center which is very important again let's see this continuation knight to g3 as i said h takes g3 if this is maybe um black's preparation to play something like e5 then as we said we just hit the pawn on g4 e5 g5 and i think you have again fun here around the square h7 in the next couple of moves maybe the queen can come into the game so i guarantee you this is not a pleasant game for black so after move c5 here houdini played bishop to d7 we have now rook to uh, a1 knight takes g3 h takes g3 again with the same idea queen to c7 bishop to f6 e5 but now stockfish 
prevents this idea with knight to e5. And if now bishop to f7, a bishop to f6, pardon me, happens, then we have f4. If you pick up the knight, then of course uh, d takes uh, um, uh, e5 is going to happen. And look at this. When we now evaluate the uh, strengths of both of these bishops, of this light square bishop, we can agree, I think, that white's light square bishop is much, much more powerful than black's because the black's bishop is simply paralyzed by its own pawn structure all of the king is strange here but as i said i'm not seeing good ways how to um, how to attack this position from black's perspective so as i said here the powerful bishop on d3 i think will cost black uh, many tactical problems so here in continuation after knight to e5 bishop to e8 f4 getting this nice grip on dark squares we have now the move f6 knight to g6 and here after move e5 uh, that houdini played the threat is of course e4 so that's why uh, stockfish is now keeping the bishop um, here active if of course now e4 happens it doesn't matter still the bishop is connected to the knight so now houdini is searching for new opportunities you see houdini search for really attacking chances on both sides in the center uh, on the king side on the queen side is hoping to get an open position and that's exactly of course what you should do when you have the bishop here you're hoping to get really a wild position an open position an open center position uh, where you have many attacking chances when you have open files open angles when you have opportunities to breathe with your bishops but of course stockfish is keeping the position locked as much as you can here stockfish first place c takes b6 maybe even b4 uh is an opportunity to keep the position further locked probably in the next couple of moves we can also expect a5 by black in order to open the position but now after move c takes b6 we have a takes b6 king to f2 here stockfish decides first to secure the king uh further here on the square although it's of course not the optimal square for the king but as i said at least you have many pawns that are protecting your king and we have to also say white has a good activity here with these pieces if something opens here on the h file the king queen can come into the game very very fast the bishop on f5 is active the knight on g6 active so uh very very good attack information so after e takes d4 e takes d4 bishop to g6 by houdini after bishop to g6 houdini played this a uh, wild line with f5 sacrificed the pawn just in order to finally get the bishop into the game so the whole game was basically a battle to get this dark bishop into the game houdini made that happen now in a different way but we have to save okay you did it okay you have some chances here on the queen side but what i don't like now in black's position is of course uh the light score problem here again in, uh, in front of black king now bishop to c2 queen to d3 is going to happen uh you have many many problems so even you can get even checkmated in some occasions so that's why this is okay playable but you have to now defend the position here like a line so in the continuation rook to e1 c5 rook to c1 queen to b7 we have now d takes c5 after b takes c5 look at this king to g1 uh houdini grabs now this pawn and has now two connected passers but stockfish is paralyzing first the position a little bit of the dark school bishop is not that, not allowing this piece to breathe and is hoping as i said to get this plan bishop to c2 queen to d3 and delivering maybe an annoying check here on h7 so rook to a6 king to h2 queen to f7 queen to g4 is coming very active into the game because there are of course many threats here also you have to now be very very accurate here in the continuation we have now queen to f6 rook to e2 we have now the move h5 and now after uh queen to h3 basically as i said this is not so easy to defend anymore for black black retreats here to uh, d4 but now after rook to e1 uh stalfish built here really a beautiful beautiful attacking formation in the continuation we have now rook to f8 but look at this now this rook is coming in a brutal way into the game and there's nothing that can be done so much i think look at this even if you try rook to e6 then rook takes uh, bishop to e e6 is going to happen you have to step back with your king to h7 now bishop to d5 bishop to e4 this pawn is weak again this is just a devastating position here for black so after move rook to e6 here houdini tried queen to f5 uh, rook to uh, a6 c4 houdini is trying to maybe get something out of this two connected pass pawns here on the, on the queen side with the support of the bishop is of course now down the exchange and stockfish is now using the moment activates now the pieces simplifies the game by trading off the rooks of course rook to c8 queen to c8 king to h7 rook to e8 we have g6 you have to create of course some breathing spaces for the king and also you're defending the h square so that's why uh, very important move the move g6 now we have rook to d8 with the threat of course to play 
uh, rook to d7, that's why bishop to g7, rook to d7 anyway, queen to f6, and now rook to d5 is of course completely winning the game. Now again, a new attack against the queen, the queen has to step back. Again, the battery on the 7th rank in here, Houdini tried c2, queen takes c2, h takes g3, king takes g3, queen to a3, a check, it doesn't matter, king to h2 is here solving every positional problem in the continuation after queen to f8, in this position, Houdini resigned. So, really, really great game by uh, Stockfish, really cool ideas of the anti Cambridge Springs defense. I think this line is very important because you will face it, and I think especially you face this chasing methods, um, this liberating line with the move, um, let's go back, with the move knight to e4, I think this is a method that you see many, many times. So now the correct way here is to retreat to g3, uh, at least simplify the game somehow. You see, although your opponent can probably take out your bishop here on g3, but has problems after bishop to d3, g4, g5, a knight to e5, c5, b4 is a method. Bishop to d3, uh, bishop to b1, queen to c2 are also good opportunities. So this is the way to go. It's about equal here the game, but as I said, at least you have some kind of idea, at least some kind of chance here to make something out of this position. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed the study. I really, really enjoyed this method applied here by Stockfish. So, as I said, in the next video, we'll see the anti Cambridge Springs defense from Black's perspective, how Stockfish is handling Jose Raul Capablanca's idea uh, here to play the Queen's Gambit decline. And if you want to see more about the Queen's Gambit decline and about some other openings, about some other defenses, sidelines and similar stuff check out our queen's game decline series here's the link of our whole playlist and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course